everybody, welcome to Raising Vibrations, you're with Simon today. And in this video, um, I'm going to be talking about Pluto generations and um, their planetary rulers. I was actually quite excited to share this uh, video because I felt that um, it was a discovery that uh, made a lot of sense to me. I wasn't actually looking for it, but um, when I was uh, talking to one of my students last night in uh, the beginner's course, um, it made complete sense to me that this was something that was really important and I felt like it by sharing it, it could help a lot of us understand specifically how to interpret the energy or the dynamic that your generation and you particularly have come to evolve in this lifetime. Okay, so let's back it up first, okay? So why this video? Well, <clears throat> like I said, if you're, say, for instance, um, let's just take me as an example, right? Born Pluto in uh, Libra, Pluto Libra generation, and you can see over there on the chart that um, symbolism over there, okay? The planet that is actually co ruling Pluto or influencing Pluto is the planet of Venus, okay? And the reason why is because Venus is co ruler with Taurus and with Libra. So because Pluto is in the Libra generation, right? Pluto is evolving through, it's moving through the Pluto, it's moving through the Libra constellation. Then the ruler of that Pluto is going to be Venus, which means that wherever Venus is in your chart, that's going to be adding an extra layer of information around what specifically the dynamics are in which you are evolving the desires in this lifetime. Okay. So let's go through this and hopefully everybody can have a better understanding, okay? So let's go, let's start off with the Pluto and Cancer generation, right? So I don't actually have them in this graph today, but the Pluto and Cancer generation um, are a generation that were part of this, this plane in their prime when we went through, when the Western world and the world itself went through the world wars, particularly World War um, II, and a lot of the information, a lot of the energy, a lot of the reality, the psychological dynamics that were there at that time were influenced on experiences like safety and security, um, the nature of nurture and protection, the dynamics in the home, right? And their planetary ruler was actually the moon. And so when you look at the soul dynamics where that generation had the moon, wherever that landed in the astrology chart would tell us specifically what that individual was going through. And that's what is key here. It's that it makes it specific, right? I'm here, Pluto Libra generation, you're there, Pluto Libra generation, yet we're in different timelines. What makes us so um, individuated and yet at the same time, both me and you can relate to the dynamics in which both parents, when we we're growing up, uh, were polarized, in um, their relationship dynamics, they felt as if the gender roles and equalities that they experienced weren't uh, fitting who they felt inside, but didn't know how to express that. So you grow up uh, seeing this um, like passive kind of aggressive type of uh, argumental structure in relationships, or one parent was um, just following the, the, the way in which existence needed to be. And the other parent was following their own roles and there was never ever like inclusion sharing. There's always maybe separation, right? Not all the time, of course, but majority of the case, there was always imbalance. You always saw the give and take not working fairly, etc. right? But what you can relate to that and both me and you have shared that. And yet we haven't met each other or, um, not only have we have not met each other, the dynamics of our lives are different, but yet we still fundamentally share that component. And that's because of the Venus, right? The Venus for all of us is what's in, it's what's being evolved, right? Because Venus is the inner and outer relationship dynamic planet. So if we look at the Pluto and Leo generation, right? You're born with this Pluto Leo, then um, your planet is actually the sun, right? So you look to the sun in your astrology charts to understand what specific dynamics you are evolving in this lifetime that makes you individual, you individuated, and what is 
as a self-creative actualization, what meaning does it have to you? Okay, wherever the sun's in the chart. So you have two people, Pluto, Leo, Generation, both coming here to manifest their dreams. Why? Because the sun represents self-actualization. The sun is ruling Leo. Sun is ruling Pluto. All right. So we have one soul that's got the sun in the third house and the other person's got uh, the sun in the seventh house. So what you're going to see here is one Pluto Leo generation person with the sun in the third, like self-actualized through being a writer. And you see the person that's got sun in the seventh house self-actualized through being recognized for being a therapist, as an example, seventh house, relatability, balance, equality, or they're a judge, as an example. Okay, see how this works. So what makes you specific with your generation? So if we look to the Pluto in Virgo generation, which is you over here, your ruling planet is Mercury, right? Mercury co-rules Gemini and um, Virgo. In the Gemini expression, Mercury has a outward masculine function. And in the Virgo um, constellation, it represents a more of an internalization of um, thinking inside of ourselves like how do we process our reality how do we psychologically understand the, the nature of our thoughts and how do we organize our um uh, like mental structure so with the pluto and virgo generation all of you will relate to the feeling of being in constant therapy with yourself right deep analysis of process um a consistent uh, need to evolve through um looking at like the technological generation right it's very very analytical in in your ability to understand computers and technology and yet on the other side there's also a part of you that also seems to be deeply affected by um the process of self-doubt this this process of um needing to liberate yourself from crisis feeling of crisis and wherever Mercury sits in your charts and aspects that it's being made and so on and so forth, that will give you an indication of what is making you individuated. So if you've got, a, you've got Mercury in the first house and your Pluto is in the ninth, as an example, you're going to be evolving your Pluto naturally through the Virgo archetype in the ninth house. But the third, the first house where Mercury is will tell you and add an extra layer to that dynamic. It's in astrology, it's actually called the depositor, right? The, the, the depositor of Leo is the sun. The depositor of Virgo is Mercury. And so when we, le when we reach the Pluto and Libra generation, right, the depositor of the Libra archetype here is Venus. So study the Venus in your chart to understand the dynamics of inner and outer relatability. And that will add an influence to what Pluto is representing for you, right? So does everybody get this methodology so far? So you'll notice that with the Pluto Libra generation, we're learning to recognize what self-love means. We're, we're starved for that experience. We feel um, intimately within ourselves that being alone is such an intense experience. And yet at the same time, we know that that is an integral part of our uh, like existence. Here's another thing to check out. Okay, Let's look at the Pluto and Scorpio generation. Your depositor is Pluto, right? Pluto itself. Every single one of you on some level recognizes the experience of feeling empowered and disempowered, right? So you come into this lifetime, there's this intense process of um, soul work and, and understanding what empowerment means. And, but you also carry these deep experiences, these deep Plutonian experiences of loss, these deep experiences of abandonment and betrayal, whether it be where mom and dad... Um, you know, move on to their different uh, ways and you feel that mom's decision was not right and you feel abandoned by that or the other way around or neither of them. But when you were growing up in high school, you felt consistently abandoned and couldn't trust, right? Because you're a planet that's actually evolving. The Scorpio archetype is Pluto itself. So the fact that Pluto is in Scorpio and it's like bouncing back to Pluto, it tells you straight away that there's deep mutation here. There's deep a process of confronting the nature of all experiences and really getting to the bottom of everything. And you can see the world that you're growing up in at the moment, you might've had like a really wonderful education and then you find yourself not being able to actualize yourself through that education because of limitations or um, restrictions that have been imposed on yourself through whatever. 
and you feel fundamentally disempowered or you are empowered in that sense and you are very much following your journey either way the dynamics of empowerment and disempowerment through pluto is operating so let's look at um sagittarius right Pl uh, pluto in the sagittarius generation jupiter is your planet that's being evolved so where's jupiter in your chart what does that house and sign aspect tell you about the specificness of your astrology so as an example we've got uh, a soul that's got pluto um, in Sagittarius, in the fourth house, the soul's coming into this lifetime, learning deep soul lessons around emotional um, security from within. Jupiter's telling you how that's working. So we go to, let's say, Jupiter situated in the um, 10th house, okay? Then you would see that there would be a 10th house dynamic here, right? Maybe there's um, uh, truth and uh, experiences around the parents. Maybe You've got um, a mom and dad that uh, fundamentally have really great positions and you see through your own um, experience that because Jupiter correlates to expansion, Jupiter in the 10th house can be like a very large family as an example with a 10th house dynamic or both parents have got a very big careers and you emotionally identify with yourself through Pluto in the 4th house Sag as somebody that sees life through this largeness, through this bigness, through the sense of, you know, parents always have big careers, or you can find yourself in dynamics where Jupiter is in the eighth house and you experience a lot of um, mistrust in terms of people lying, you know? So what makes you different wherever the sign that's ruling the, the constellation is situated? So again, Leo, this will be the sun. Mercury, this will be virgo pardon me if this is virgo it'll be um, mercury if you're a pluto libra generation that's venus pluto scorpio generation pluto pluto sagittarius generation jupiter all about the truth having faith knowing what's true what's not true right being convinced and convert and then the expansion of information and finally we've got the polarity to the pluto and cancers we've got the pluto and capricorns and their planet of course is saturn so Saturn, the structure of reality, the nature of, of what it is to, to exist through form is being mutated. So from any soul that was born with, um, you know, post-2008, uh, Saturn will be the planet that will show up in this lifetime that they're evolving. You know, it's their sense of authority. It's their sense of boundaries, their sense of um, opinions and ideas that can be implemented in the world through the structures that have been formed through the home. So interesting things to consider, and I hope that that kind of stimulated some thought processes with you guys and um, get your chart out. And of course, um, go have a look where that's, where that's manifesting for yourself, okay? Other than that one, have a fantastic week. Take care. Bye-bye, guys.